In this video, we're going to discuss how to detect and fix logic errors. Logic errors are a type of error that occur um, when programming, uh, which do not appear with the red squigglies. So just a reminder, a syntax error is something like if we just put cat and semicolon, obviously that's a syntax error because what is cat? It's not anything. And so this is a syntax error. We get our red squigglies. Um, so logic errors are much harder to detect. They are when certain things like this occur. So let's say I have int num1, and we'll set it equal to 6. And we have int num2, and we'll set this equal to 8. Well, I want to swap the values. So I want to set num1 equal to num2, and num2 equal to num1. Now, if we output num1, just like this, and let's just put equals, and we will go ahead and copy paste this line down for num2. So now we want to compare before swapping and after swapping. So let's go ahead and run this. So we know that before num1 is going to equal 6 and num2 is going to equal 8. And then after our swap, we want num1 to equal 8 and num2 to equal 6. So num1 equals 6, num2 equals 8, num1 equals 8, but then num2 also equals 8. And so for some reason, num2 was not switched. And so this takes a little bit of thought and a little bit of work to actually detect what happened here. So let's step through this line by line. So first we set num1 to 6, that's great. num2 to 8, that's also just fine. And then we output, so we know that there's nothing going on here. But now we come down to this line. num1 equals num2. So that means that what we're doing is we are storing 8 into num1. So num1 right now equals 8. And so now we come down to this line, and we have num2 equals num1. But we remember from the line before, num1 now equals 8, which means that we're setting num2 equal to 8. And so this line is actually, well, these two lines would be the equivalent of doing num2 equals num1 equals num2 which is a big, long, ugly looking statement. And it's obviously wrong because we are setting num2 equal to num2. And that is not what we want to be doing. And so here we have a logic error. And so there's no errors in our error list. We've programmed everything correctly, or so it looks like, because we don't have any syntax errors. It builds without a problem. But the results are incorrect. And so we have to think about what exactly we can do to fix this. And so we think and we think, and eventually we come up with the fact that we need another variable. And so we'll create an int swap. And it is not going to hold any value. And so what we'll do is we're going to say num1. First, what we're going to do is we're going to say swap equals num1. And then we're going to set num1 equal to num2. And so at this point, swap equals 6. And at this point, num1 equals 8. And then now we want num2 to equal what num1 or what num1 was originally, which was 6. And so we can look over here and in our comment, we see, oh, swap was equal to 6. So that means that all we need to do is set num2 equal to swap. And so let's go ahead and run that and see if it worked. And sure enough, num1 equals 6, num2 equals 8, and then num1 equals 8, and num2 equals 6. And just for clarity here, we'll just put an end line and say after swapping. just for good programming sake. 
So num1 originally equals 6, num2 originally equals 8, and then after swapping, num1 now equals 8, and num2 now equals 6. So logic errors come in many different forms, um, and they can be very difficult to detect. One of the biggest um, assets that we have, or biggest tools that we have for fixing logic errors is using comments correctly, as you can see here. And there is another video that you can watch on how to use comments correctly. Um, and this just demonstrates exactly how they're useful. Um, so once again, to cover the basics of a logic error, a logic error is something that occurs when all of our code is syntactically correct, but we are not getting the results that we want. We're telling the computer exactly what to do, and it's doing exactly what we've told it, but we think that we're telling it to do something other than what we have actually told it to do. Meaning we told it to set num1 equal to num2 and then num2 equal to num1. And in our mind, that means swap them. But to the computer, that means set the value of num1 equal to the value of num2. And then directly after that, set the value of num2 to the current value of num1, which is equal to num2. So. When detecting logic errors, it's key to test your program regularly, meaning run it very often and check your results, and just follow up on your results every time to make sure that they are in fact correct and what you're looking for so that you can avoid logic errors.